Farmers across Africa are increasingly turning to sustainable land and water management practices. They are trying to raise yields and enhance food security, while adapting to ongoing climate change and reducing land degradation risk. When you look at food security, climatic change has greatly affected food security. People are starving in villages, they are hungry, they are sleeping without food, simply because the crops have failed out, simply because the declines have gone down, and uh, they spend more money on buying food, which money they cannot access. We are now check the granaries. It is nothing inside. It is nothing. It is nothing. On the 30 years ago, these rivers were flowing throughout. So you find that uh, people were not uh, taking this water with their barrels. People used to dig this water out of the rivers. So these days they have dried off completely. We used to have crops like banana plantations, but as per now they are hardly seen due to the change in the climate conditions. We used to have uh, maize in plenty, today it has become scarce. We used to grow beans extensively. But due to the change in the climate conditions, beans are really good. Uh, the traditional crops have all, almost disappeared, like co cotton, due to the increase in the pests and diseases as a result of the change in the climate conditions. Farmers still need advisories, need to be advised. Farmers need improved inputs. Farmers need uh, improved markets. So far, such practices have not been adopted at the scale needed to make a large enough difference. One reason is that knowledge, financing, policy and institutions are often fragmented. A lot may be gained by improving coordination and mutual learning within and across countries and sectors among people and their landscapes. Obama CBO was started in the year 2001, September. The purpose of starting Obama was to fight the humanizing hunger, that is for food security, HIV and AIDS, and to promote education amongst the people of Obama. Helen, Odi, now this is Helen's home, come out, yeah, how are you, yes, this is Helen Letingizo, who is one of my, my farmers at the division, Kirisia division, and uh, you can see the way it is, it has really been uh, affected by drought, the prolonged drought. She says that this season they have got, uh, they have only had uh, 10, 10 days of rain for the whole season. So that is where you can see how the maize is and she is expecting very little compared to what she has been uh, harvesting. The fertility of the soil 20 years ago was very high. We used to get 20, 20 sacks of maize from an acre. But these days are decreased to the extent that you can hardly get five sacks from one acre. People's livelihoods have been affected so much, especially the farming communities. Uh, they need to produce more to meet the food demand for the growing population. The land is no longer enough which is really in their hand. So what they are doing is again to encroach on forests cut down trees and expand the agricultural land. But now you cannot plant any tree without water because it will dry off completely because there is no rain. So you cannot, you have nowhere to get water for watering these trees. So you'll find that there is no way you can even introduce that uh, tree planting system in Garamoja here. But though there is a, a need to introduce what you call tree planting to every area of Karamoja. So. One of the reasons why they are really deforesting is really to expand on the agricultural land so that they can produce more food for themselves and also some for, for selling 
to meet again their other requirements in the homes. I want to believe that cutting down of trees has contributed to the little rain that we nowadays find. I also believe that the use of pollutants like uh, smoke from the vehicles and pusher mills, smoke from several industries in the vicinity or in Kenya are, commun are contributing immensely to the global warming. We need to start now for us to get the food forever, for us to be happy like we have been thinking. We need to pressurize, we need to form into pressure groups to plant more trees, sustain the trees, and one arm, one of our arms, should be making noise to the government to pass laws which control po pollution. For a few years now, national, regional and international frameworks have been put in place to support the efforts of African land users by scaling up investments in sustainable land and water management and providing practical guidance for policy and financing. Many countries in Africa have developed strategies to improve agricultural productivity, national action programs to address land degradation, and national adaptation programs of action to climate change. So climate change is becoming a reality, and we have to, change, we have to adapt some other methods of survival. For example, in Karamoja, we have plants which can which are drought resistant, they are indigenous to the area and produce uh, commodities like gum arabic uh, which have market in the international uh, markets. Uh, some of the solutions to counteract uh, climate change and the government is putting a lot of effort in that is one restoring the water towers through reforestation of some of these uh, water towers within the country. And uh, the government is really removing people from this forest so that we can restore the, this forest by conserving the environment through planting trees, through conservation uh, tillage, through conservation structures within the country. And this is really being promoted and the farmers are taking it seriously because they are getting the effect of climate change. Many of these countries, such as Ethiopia, Mali, Niger, Nigeria and Uganda, are also actively involved in the Tear Africa Partnership. They are working to take these strategies and programs a step further by developing national investment frameworks for scaling up sustainable land management across sectors. These frameworks include practical investment activities and arrangements for monitoring and learning. In this context, stakeholders involved in land and climate issues in Africa, including African governments, the African Union, the UN conventions, the Tear Africa partners and civil society organizations, are actively working together on scaling up sustainable land management practices for a better future in Africa. All the partners that have been leveraging or supporting uh, CADLAC and the AHI, uh, like uh, Uganda Wildlife Authority, Uga U United Nations Development Programs, UNDP, IUCN, uh, LLS projects, and all other partners that have been working now come to put where there is need, not as a whole process. That means communities are now more of more uh, self-sustaining, demand, self-driven, and are able to identify their problems and improve their livelihoods. Africa is not the same everywhere. Each village has its own temperatures. It has its own natural vegetation. It has its own background. Let us start studying 
solutions of all the villages per village. If we do this, and we make a general large movement covering the whole continent, definitely I want to believe, and I believe sincerely, that Africa is endowed with massive resources. Africa can feed itself. If we can only make use of the natural resources up in Africa, like trees, rivers, freshwater lakes, the fish, and our own ideas, we can easily get out of Africa's poverty and hunger. We don't need to rely on food support from elsewhere. Africa has better range than many parts of Europe and America. So my idea is we need to form a, a very big network whose membership is drawn practically from the grassroots. That will be the solution, Charlie.